So Rob, when we're in the camera settings, mm -hmm. normally I'm more of a 1080 guy and I have a lot of options for frame rates. It, it varies by camera, but in this particular case, if I want 60p, I have to go back down to 720. Is that problematic? Why is that? No, not really. I mean, the thing about it, Rich, is that almost every DSLR camera is not going to actually offer you a 1080p 60 mode. Well, and I say as of yet, really. Right. I'm sure that will probably come as processors get better, memory cards get faster, but that's a lot of data to pump through on one of these cameras. So most of the manufacturers... They, they'd probably melt, right? Right, yeah, just melt right before your eyes. Okay. Um, a lot of the manufacturers, yeah, they do force you, if you want that higher frame rate, to go back down to a 720p mode. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I'm working 1080, uh, that's not going to work. Sure but it is. Sure it is. Right. I mean, we can we can do a lot of things in in post to uh, you know push in on it, uh, have our NLE automatically interpret the frame size so it matches the other footage on our timeline, and so on and so forth. So don't be worried about it. The key is that we want to get that higher frame rate of 60 frames per second. Now to be clear, you could do this very marginally. For example, if you were shooting 1080, you shot at 1080p 30 or 2997. Yes, I suppose you could interpret that down to 2398, but... Very very little gain. Very little slow motion is yeah. going to happen there. So we want to shoot at that higher frame rate. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously besides setting up your exposure triangle and your ISO and... And, and there's a movie for that. There is, we have some <laughs> movies for that. Uh, it's just to go into your menu settings real quick. And in this case, I'm on a Canon 7D. And I'm just going to scroll over to my movie settings. And right down here, you'll see an option for uh, movie recording size, right? And if I yep. click there, I have a whole bunch of do uh, different options. I'm in an NTSC mode right here, so I have uh, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, which is 2398, 24, which is really 2398, and then the one I want to choose for today is this one, 1280 by 720, and notice it says 60 there, meaning 60 frames per second. Now, other cameras are going to be a little bit different, but the menu is pretty much the same. I mostly shoot Nikon. I have a choice for this. The key, again, is that high frame rate. Right. And think about it. If you only need 24 frames per second and you've got 60, you have almost two and a half times more frames. Right. Now, here's the big thing that most people forget about this slow motion yeah. stuff. The audio will not be in sync. Oh, you mean... Oh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't really work. Yeah, that's a great point, Rich. When you're shooting slow motion like this, there's a couple of key points, I think, you know, that are important to keep in mind on set. First of all, that everybody on set from the, you know, the, uh, the DP to the gaffer to the script supervisor to the, you know, the PA, all know that you're shooting a slow motion shot, right? Getting everybody on the same page about these specialty shots is important. The second thing is what you just mentioned, Rich, that the audio is essentially going to become... Out of sync. Out of sync, right? Now, there is a workaround for some music videos where they want the lips to be in sync, but they want the actual performance to be in slow motion. Right. What they actually do is they speed up the audio and lip sync to it really, really fast right. while recording. But that in itself is a special skill. But we're just doing some B-roll here today, right, right? Exactly, and I think that's really where this technique excels is in sort of B-roll where you're not really concerned about the audio, you're more concerned about getting that nice, uh, smooth, slow motion. Nice. So, let's record. We got the camera set up. Yep. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, iced tea here on the, uh, on the table here, and why don't you take control of the camera there. And what I'm gonna do is just take this little pitcher of iced tea and pour it as neatly as I can into this glass. And again, we're recording at 60 frames a second, so I'm gonna just take this. I'm getting thirsty. And do a little up and down on the picture there for slow motion. That looks good. All right. Cool. Cool. And because I'm the type of person that likes more than one take, why don't we get one more for safety? Okay, sure. I'll recycle my iced tea here, one sec. We're good. We're very conscious here, making sure we reuse the props as opposed to pouring it out. Okay, let's try that again. Take two here. Take the same pitcher of iced tea, and I'm going to pour it in. A little up and down here. There we go. All right, cool. So one of those will probably work, creating a nice slow motion effect. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. We'll go ahead and stop the camera. Mm -hmm. We had that as one clip with two takes on the same card. We could have busted it, but it's pretty easy. And now that we actually have a digital file, we're going to jump into three popular workflows. So when we come back, we're going to take a look at Final Cut 10, Premiere Pro, and then stepping up to something like After Effects, where you have some advanced frame blending that almost works like a morph. Yeah, and uh, you know, all three tools, depending on what you're doing or what you have already, you know, what tool set you already have, are going to do a pretty nice job at producing that nice, smooth, organic slow motion. We'll be right back.